Welcome everybody to our summer reading plan and share workshop. So exciting. Um, you know, we had such a great time on Tuesday and we're looking forward to continuing uh, the 2022 summer reading discussion today. Um, so I guess I'll I'll start off since I'm already talking here. My name is Jennifer Johnson. I'm the library advancement assistant at the Vermont Department of Libraries. Uh, I think, what did I say on Tuesday? I think this is my fifth set of summer reading workshops and they, they've they changed a lot from year to year, but the, the main link is that a lot of amazing librarians always attend and y'all always get so excited for summer programming. And then when summer rolls around, you all are doing incredible work. So that that has always remained the same and I expect will always remain the same, even if I'm here for another six years. Um, and I'll pass it to Jonathan. Uh, so I am Jonathan Clark, the Youth Services Consultant, um, Vermont Department of Libraries. And I guess in various capacities, this is my ninth summer reading, I think. Um, on on this end, it, it summer reading goes all year round <laughs> to some extent. Yes. Um, uh, but yeah, I think I think this is my my ninth year. Um, and yeah, we're really, really excited to to be here today to be able to hear from all of you and all your fantastic um, ideas and and um, what you're planning for this this summer. And we're so happy to have Karen Gravelin with us today. Hi everyone, um, my name is Karen Gravelin. I am the Library Consultant for Inclusive Services and Director of the ABLE Library, um, which is our Library for the Blind and Print Disabled here in Vermont. Um, this is my first summer reading, being in charge of any sort of summer reading. <laughs> um, prior, My prior positions were either um, as an adult reference librarian or as a branch manager where I oversaw the children's librarians who were actually doing the hard work of summer reading. Um, so I think that I still counts. <laughs> I was in I was a support role <laughs> and I'm excited to kind of be kind in it this time around. Um, so thank you for having me today. Yeah, thanks thank for joining you. us. And as you can see, wide range of experience even yes. just from the VT Lib staff. So um, we are learning from you just as much as we hope you are um, getting some useful, ooh, the phone's ringing, uh, useful nuggets from us here today. I'm going to go ahead and share our PowerPoint here again. All righty, can we see that? Yes. Okay, I'm going to turn my camera off. Um, so I think we, we touched on this briefly, but if you could please mute your microphone and turn off your camera during this portion of the workshop, um, you will have plenty of time later to to chat with each other and interact. But uh, for this time, if you can mute yourself and turn off your camera, that would be fantastic. And let's hop into the agenda for today. So, hey, you've been welcomed and introduced. We've already checked one off the list. Um, next, we're going to start off with Karen uh, talking about accessible summer reading, uh, what the ABLE Library is doing, and just some general tips for y'all. Uh, we'll move into a really quick overview of some summer reading basics. Um, again, you have the PowerPoint that we're using right now, so you can feel free to go back and refer to anything. Um, if we don't cover a certain slide in, oh my goodness, um, if we don't cover a certain slide in, um, you know, super core of the earth level depth, um, you could always go back and re refer to it and we're always available for questions. Um, we'll, we'll once again touch on the summer programming grants and Beanstack. Uh, and then we'll jump in to the meat and potatoes of this session, which is really the the idea sharing and planning discussions. Uh, we'll quickly go over how to use Jamboard. Um, we'll give you some time to do the actual activity and then we will talk about it. Um, so please, um, if you have any questions during this first part, stick those in the chat and I'm sure before we do the Jamboard tutorial, we'll be able to, you know, if it's something we can quickly address, then we will. 
Um, if not, our contact information is on the last slide and you can feel free to reach out to us at any time via email or on the phone, but not dirt. Well, I'm trying to present <laughs> like this other person calling right now. <laughs> um, all right, I am going to hand it over to Karen um, and Karen, just tell me when you you want me to switch to the next slide. Sure, thank you, Jennifer. Um, so as I mentioned, I am Karen Gravelin, director of the ABLE Library, and this is the first year that the ABLE Library is going to be running a summer reading program. Um, so while it's true that most of our patrons are older, we do have younger patrons as well, and we're hoping that showcasing our summer reading program will help us provide better library services to them and also remind patrons, um, parents, educators, and caregivers that the ABLE Library welcomes patrons of all ages. Um, so since this is our first summer reading program and we have kind of a long distance relationship with our patrons, um, we wanted to start out with something really simple. So we're advertising our program directly to our patrons through the mail with instructions on how to sign up. Um, and when, the, when a patron signs up, we'll send them a swag bag and activity packet. Um, the packet will be in large print with instructions on how to participate as well as um, accessible activities that kids can do at home with their parents. Um, we're planning to use Beanstack as well, um, like many of you, to keep our kids, um, to help our kids keep track of what they're reading and participate in any challenges. Um, and our swag bags are going to be really simple as well. They're just going to include a, a few small fun items like um, poppets, fidget spinners, stickers, things like that. Um, and we're not doing big prizes this year um, since we don't even really know, because it's the first year, we don't even really know how many um, kids are going to participate. Um, it's just meant to be a fun way to remind kids to read over the summer, and it's going to be just really low key. Um, but most importantly, we're going to be encouraging our patrons to visit their public libraries. And it's kind of unfortunate because I feel like a lot of our patrons don't realize that just because they are able library patrons, it doesn't mean that they're not allowed to um, visit their local public libraries and be patrons of your libraries as well. Um, so we want to encourage them to remember that their public libraries are also great resources. And um, after this workshop, Jennifer uh, mentioned that she'd be sending out an email with resources, um, including a link to accessible activities that libraries for the blind and print disabled all across the country are using for their summer reading programs this year. And uh, most of them are really simple and you're welcome to use any of them to provide some accessible programming at your library this summer, if that's something that you're interested in doing. Next slide, please. Um, so I just have a couple of tips for inclusive summer reading programs. I'm sure you've heard of some of these ideas before, but I wanted to share share them to make um, as a way to make your library and your programs a little bit more accessible this summer. Um, the first thing is that an option that you have is that you could provide a behind the scenes um, kind of library tour. Um, I would market this as a before or after hours program specifically for families who need a low stakes way to visit and learn about the library. And this can allow ch children with sensory or behavioral issues to experience the library in kind of a, a judgment free environment, um, which can be helpful for them, but also for their caregivers because it can be very stressful to um, bring a child who um, others might perceive as having behavioral issues when really they're just experiencing the world differently from the rest of us um, and, and have that judgment from other parents. Um, so it's kind of, sometimes it's best to have that low, low key way to engage with the library. Um, and by allowing them to get familiar with the library and meet library staff ahead of time, they may feel more comfortable coming to the library in the future. Um, you could also consider creating a social story about the library or a program that you're running. Um, so if for whatever reason you can't do a behind the scenes library tour or you would prefer to also offer something else for patrons to see. Um, social stories are an idea that were initially used to help kids with autism to visualize and understand what they would be doing um, before the actual event, whether it's visiting the library, going to the grocery store, attending some sort of event. 
Um, so in the picture on the slide, what you'll see is it's from the Johnson County Public Library in Kansas. This picture is part of their social story, um, which starts out with walking into the library. And in, in this particular um, picture is, show, is now showing what the children's space looks like. And I think that this can be helpful for any caregiver to share with any child. It shows them what to expect and what's expected of them before they come to the library. Um, this can reduce anxiety and promote the kinds of behaviors you want to see your patrons engaging in when they visit. Um, and it's not just, it doesn't have to be just for um, kids who have, you know, learning disabilities or um, anxiety issues. I know plenty of adults who like to look at restaurant menus before they go to a restaurant so that they can prepare themselves for when they go into the business. Um, and so it can be just a nice way to help people feel more comfortable with the library or a new program. Um, I also just want to mention the idea of running programs that are more open structured. And by that, I mean that if you're running a program that has a finished product in mind, um, is there a way to broaden the scope of the finished product so that children of all abilities can participate and produce something that fits within the scope? So for instance, one of the activities that the ABLE Library is sending out is using recyclable materials to make art. And kind of the thought behind that is that it keep trash out of the ocean and instead of throwing it away, use those materials to create some sort of artwork. But instead of identifying what kind of art, the activity allows the kids to decide what they want to make with the materials provided to them. Um, and you may not be able to make this happen all of the time, but it is something to keep in mind and consider doing it when you can. Um, that alone can make a program much more inclusive to children of all developmental levels and abilities, and doing so can potentially allow you to run a program for a broader age range. Um, and lastly, I just wanted to share that the ABLE Library will be providing an adapted CSLP reading list. So the Libraries for the Blind and Print Disabled went through the CSLP reading list and pulled any that were also available as audiobooks and created their own list with um, the numbers so that um, ABLE patrons can access them and download them. Um, and I also think that they added some titles and put some Spanish titles there as well. And that's another resource that will be shared after the workshop. Um, and then I just want to mention that if you have questions about how to make a program or acti activity more accessible, if you want to send me your social story just to have someone else look it over, or um, even if you have a really cool accessible activity or program that you want to share out, please let me know. I'm happy to bounce ideas around with any of you and help in any way I can. And that's that's it. Thank you so much, Karen. And um, we do have your um, contact information on the um, uh, the, the handout for today as well. Um, really appreciate you you sharing all of that. Um, it's really exciting um, to hear about um, everything that y'all are doing. And um, it really ties into the, like a lot of what you're talking about, like the open structure of programming. I think that is just sort of like, it's kind of what we are emphasizing in general of making programs accessible for whether that's family programming to really think about how it might work for all ages, you know, abilities um, as as well, just to like to keep them open ended and to think about how they might be adapted depending on who might because you never know who's going to show up to a program. Right. And so it's good to be able to not exclude someone for whatever reason if they show up because you're like, oh, this is actually you know, you're 13 and this is like only it for 12, like up to 12 year olds. Right. Like, you know, it's better to to be able to to think about whoever shows up, how you might make that um, work for, you know, those who, who do come and to welcome everybody to those those programs. And, you know, I think librarians are really good at doing that on the fly, but certainly if you can think through beforehand um, about specific activities and ways to do that. Um, it's even even better. So thank you so much for for um, joining us and sharing all that with us. Thank you again hey. for having me. Thank you, Karen. And as Karen said, um, in the follow up email, we'll send at the end. Uh, there's some links and then there's also uh, the book list will be attached. So that's exciting. Thank you for sending that to us, Karen. Absolutely.
OK, so now we're going to get into. Um, we're going to go through some of this fairly quickly, um, but feel free to throw questions um, in the chat. We know that again, some of you are new to summer reading. Some of you um, are experts, um, so uh, we're going to just review, go over some some basic things, some basic uh, elements, and then um, we will um, get into our brainstorming activity. So um, first of all, what is summer reading? Um, you know, the basics of it, you know, tend like historically it was focused on on reading and literacy. Um, and then with there has been a movement in the last however many years, um, 15 years or so um, of summer learning versus summer reading, um, you know, which tends to incorporate STEM activities and other learning activities into into summer programming. Um, so part of it is just a name thing. The reality is most libraries are doing, you know, their their summer reading is also incorporates summer learning um, that is not just emphasizing um, reading. Um, so um, that's you know we we are still using we are using like for the bean sack and other things we we use summer reading, um, but certainly we know that there's so much programming that goes along with it. Um, and that is and that is part of it. Um, and then the other thing is that summer reading feels there's so much emphasis on it. It feels like an like an island in and of itself, um, but it's really an extension of what libraries are already doing. Um, and sometimes it can be really stressful to like we don't have enough people. We don't have enough money for summer reading. We don't know what we're going to do. You know, if you're just doing what you're always doing, you're serving your community, you're provide you have programs that you've been doing all year and those programs are happening in the summer. That's summer programming and you know that's I think is a good way to think about it is that it, it you know it is emphasized and it is kind of its own program. You can make it a big deal out of it, but it is also you know part of the larger you know like the, the larger uh, just service that you're providing to your communities in general. All right, next slide. That's fair, thank you. Um, so, you know, why do we do it? Again, we're encouraging literacy, um, hopefully, uh, and learning and fun, and then we're making it fun as well during the summer months. Um, and we want to think about ways to empower people of all ages to have positive, positive attitudes about reading. Um, you know, we there's a lot of emphasis on children and and teens for summer reading. Um, but you know, again, we really want to think about adult programming, but really to think about all age programming and how we can make it as as inclusive as, po as possible. Um, and then, of course, um, we have been emphasizing over and over again, we just keep, keep talking about collaboration, um, collaboration with between libraries, with other communities, groups and other organizations in your community um, rather than um, again, rather than working as like an island in and of yourself, but to be to think about holistically as to what is happening during the summer in your communities. Um, and then, of course, part of it is to promote library services to get folks to come into your library. So um, how can you best meet the needs of your families this summer? Again, this is where we we you are the experts, you know your communities. Um, so, you know, we are here to help in any way that we can um, as far as programming ideas and of course to bounce ideas off, off other um, librarians. Um, but really, you know, you know, you know best what will work for your communities. And at the basic, at the base of everything, especially when when serving youth, is really to think about that we are providing a, a safe space for them. Um, and it's that really basic thing of like, you know, if if kids don't have food, they don't have shelter, it's really that is, you know, those are the basic things that um, are required in order to, um, to then think about reading and learning those other elements. Um, so we really want to start at that level. And then again, just to think about 
about ways to engage young people in activities. Um, and again, not to exclude anyone to be as inclusive of as, as possible, build on what interests and what things are already are already um, on what folks are already doing. So in thinking about again, the thing about what your community needs, um, these are just we're not going to go through all of this, but um, again, to think about what you're already providing uh, as well as what other um, services are in your community um, and and how you might be able to collaborate with other elements with other organizations. Um, and I, I have been really impressed with um, librarians with you all in Vermont about how we'll, great you are at working together and, and working with your communities and other organizations, um, uh, which is really great. And to, to be able to think about how you might um, uh, be able to fill any gaps in, in, you know, to think about what services might be missing and how you might be able to provide that, um, whether that's summer meals or, um, you know, uh, whatever it might be. Um, and then again, as, as mentioned, how are you making your programs inclusive and accessible to all your community members? Um, and Karen gave us some really great ideas about that, and we also have that as part of our, um, our Jamboard later to get some ideas about, about that specifically. Um, so in thinking about the building blocks of your program, again, the really basic elements of it, and Every program is different. We are here to support you. We, you know, there are certain things that are we are given. We have our programming grants. We have the CSLP menu that we've made accessible to everybody. But every library is, you know, able to determine what their summer reading looks like, um, whether or not they use the CSLP theme or not, um, and to what level that looks like. So again, of course, like, you know, thinking about how reading um fits into that and and then how if you are using reading like are you tracking it or are you not tracking it um and then if so how are you doing it are you using beanstack are you using something else um are you doing more of a community um tracking the community rather than like individual readers um and then to think about um programming how you're incorporating it um are you going to have like a big Kickoff, you're going to have a end close and like a big end of summer party. Um, and then, of course, you know, things are starting to open up where there's where there is likely last summer there was a lot of uh, amazing outdoor programming. Um, but um, there's also, we know that a lot of you've been doing amazing virtual programs. So that's part of thinking about like what programs you're going to be, like what format of programs you're going to be offering. Um, and hopefully, you know, moving towards being able to have the option of in-person programming this summer as well. Fingers crossed. Um, and and then other services you're providing: technology, summer meals, which we mentioned earlier. Um, and um, yeah. Next slide, please, Jennifer. Um, again, so what then? What is the blueprint of your program? Again, and this is different for every library, but these are good things to think about. How long is your program? It doesn't have to be the entire summer. Um, it could just be a couple of weeks, um, or it could be like a more of a, like an intensive couple of weeks, or it could be spread out um, even beyond summer to a certain extent if you wanted to. Um, and then also to think about, uh, you know, the just the capacity of of your organization to do anything in addition to what you were already all the amazing tons of things that you're already doing. Um, uh, again, and then think about if you're using the CSLP theme or something else. Um, and no matter what, this is always something I like to emphasize. You know, this we this year the theme is the oceans of possibilities. Um, but and there is a lot of great resources for tying your programming into that, but you do not need to tie every program into that. Um, in order for it to be summer reading. Um, so that's something we always try to try to emphasize. Um, and then to think about if you're using incentives or not um, and how you might do that and then um, or other ways that you're going to acknowledge um, participation in summer reading. 
Uh, so what tools do you have? So you have the Department of Libraries. We are here to help, like I said, in any way that we can. If you want to just reach out to us, you know, about any ideas that you might have, any roadblocks you've run into. Um, we do have their summer programming grants, which we're going to talk specifically about in a, in a minute. Um, we have the CSLP manual, which you've made available to everyone. Um, and that those links have already been shared out um, several times. Um, but if you are now scrambling, you're thinking, oh, I don't remember where it is. You can email me. We'll send you the link. <laughs> um, Beanstack, we will talk a little bit about and we're going to um, have this. We'll, we'll be a lot more information about Beanstack has been coming in the next few weeks, but we'll touch on it. But that is a tool that you you all have um, for free through the. Um, through the Department of Libraries and then to think about other community part community community partnerships and grant opportunities. Um, uh, if those who were able to join us on Tuesday, like organizations like Cliff, um, which are fantastic and they have a lot of grant opportunities and after and, and Vermont after school and a lot of other um, grant opportunities are out there. Um, so if you think about how you might be able to tap into those as well. Um, and then of course the um, uh, the listserv, which again now, if you're not already on it, it's the use services. It has been changed um, over the now that it's the use services listserv. If you're not a part of that, um, uh, again, let, reach out to me and we'll we'll get you onto the listserv. We encourage you to do that and encourage those conversations um, on on that platform. Um, and then promotional tools, your library website, newsletter, social media. Um, those are all, uh, you know elements of of uh, that you probably all have to some degree that you can use to um, for your programming. OK, so reporting. Um, this is not the the most fun part of it, um, but uh, we don't want you to stress about reporting um, and we really want you to just think about ways that you can sim that you can capture it. and mostly we want you to give yourself like to whatever if you're doing a virtual program however you're doing it think about ways to capture you know what you are doing and that all you know that again that counts as programming is programming um but um mostly what we are looking for is is stories from your patrons for, you know hearing about what you're doing and this year we got a lot of that and we got an amazing we didn't get a chance we really wanted to put together like a like a video maybe we might still be able to share something out like but we got a lot of amazing um stories and and um pictures from from what y'all were doing last year and it was really fantastic um so those the those are going to be due um uh october 15th and we'll be sending out plenty of reminders um about that All right, I'll give Jonathan a little water break here. Um, and I'll, I'll talk quickly about the summer programming grants. If you attended on Tuesday, um, it's basically the same spiel. Uh, we are once again offering programming grants to all of Vermont public libraries. You are all eligible while well, assuming you meet the you know, financial requirements and all that kind of stuff. But we are offering them to all Vermont public libraries. This year we are offering $300. When I first started, we offered $100 grants. Um, and now we are up to $300 grants for Vermont public libraries to support uh, programs for youth and families in the summer. And when we say programs, um, you can either hire a performer or a presenter to come to your library during the summer using these grant funds, as long as the program is for youth and families, or you can purchase equipment. And we have a bunch of examples on the grant page to, to use during a program that you hold during the summer. And then um, if it's something like a cricket or cameras, you can use all year long. So you have many options. We definitely encourage you to collaborate with other libraries if that's an option. Uh, if there's a performer who costs more than $300 and there's another library close by, hey, collaborate on that. Get an expensive performer um, and have a joint presentation. You, there are so many options. Um, we really, really, really encourage everyone to apply for this grant. Other than submitting the paperwork, 
and asking, uh, answering a few quick questions about what you're planning on doing. Um, you know, it's it's an easy application, so we really encourage you all to apply. The deadline is uh, this coming Monday, March 14th at 11.59 p.m. So you have all of Monday, March 14th to get your um, to get the application submitted. Um, if you go to the link, uh, which I think was also in my email, but will definitely be in the follow up email as well. You will see everything you need to know about this grant as well as the link to the application. Uh, we really encourage you all to apply. And if you are stuck for some reason and you run into an issue, we, again, we are here to to help on the grant page. There is a specific um, we have a use use services grant email that we'd like you to send your email to. Um, but you know, you can also send it directly to me if you're stuck and and um, with the application process because we really want everybody to to apply and and to get that that funding. Um, Okay, so Beanstack. So um, for those who are new to summer reading or you know haven't been able to to um, use this tool, we've had this for for um, a couple of years. I guess this will be our our third summer reading, sort of. The first in 2020 was a bit of a scramble, um, and we kind of got it up late. Um, but um, we are excited about this tool it's a it's a great it's a registration and reading tracking platform um, and it's free for everybody the way that we have it set up um, it's every library has access to it um, we have a bunch of resources on our page bunch of videos bunch of all sorts of stuff um, and um, we have had we uh, are going to have it set up similar to what we did last year um, but of, like with everything else like we definitely want your your input on it and what's working and what's not um, but there will be a lot of information coming very soon. Um, it's pretty close to being done and we will share out um, a staff um, challenge so that you can basically see what it's going to look like and preview the whole thing um, uh, well in advance of, of the start of summer reading. And then um, we've had a little bit of trick, of a difficult time uh, meeting with our Beanstack person, Becky, who's really great. Um, she wasn't able to join us for our workshops this week, but we we're going to have something at the end of the month or maybe April um, specifically about Beanstack and we will share that information out as soon as we have it. Awesome. 